Okay guys, a quick uh, video on the rule of nines and why it works. So in front of me I've got two MPI camshafts. The main difference between this and an A plus or an A camshaft is you're missing the distributive worm gear uh, and the fuel pump lobe. Instead you've got these pair of lobes um, that sit either side of a camshaft um, sensor. So every time the camshaft spins, these two lobes go between it and the MPI ECU knows exactly where the cam is. And that's for the, the fueling um, firing order uh, for the MPI system because without this it doesn't know exactly where the, the cam position is and you can't take it off the crank because the crank uh, spins twice as fast as the, uh, as the camshaft and to, uh, to make sure exactly where it is for the, uh, for the MPI system it has to know exactly where the, uh, where the camshaft is in position. So to give you a rundown of a, of a camshaft if you've never actually seen one, it has three bearing positions. So that one goes onto your, uh, onto your wheel on the outside. If your oil pump slots into the, uh, into the end, goes into that groove there. And each cylinder has a pair of lobes to uh, open and close the valves. So for positioning reasons, you've got exhaust inlet for, uh, for the outer cylinders and then inlet exhaust for the two inner cylinders. So, why does the rule of nine work? Well, it may seem like a, an overall random array of, uh, of lobes, but there is methods to Rover, BMC and Austin's madness. So where it positions itself inside the engine, you have, uh, have followers. They look like tiny little buckets. Um, unfortunately, I haven't got any uh, here. So what I'm going to, uh, to do very quickly is I'm going to go and get a socket and that will explain the better. So you're going to have to use your imagination. I've got your normal standard Halfords half inch drive here. So where you've got uh, in your engine, you'll have eight of these and they'll sit up against the camshaft. Inside the camshaft, sorry, inside the, the follower and going up to the cylinder head, you've got a follower. This is a standard classic mini follower bucket dish that goes into the cam goes into the rocker sorry and then you've got the uh, the end of it that sits inside the, uh, the follower and that's exactly what it does it sits inside the follower and it will essentially sit like that against it so as the camshaft turns it will push the follower up and it'll push the rocker up on the back and push it down at the front and open the valve. That's straightforward. It doesn't have to be any more complicated than that. So why does the rule of nine work? So we've got eight lobes altogether, and the theory behind it is that if number one is fully closed, number eight is fully open. One and eight, nine. Again, why does that work? So if you have a look, and I'll put you straight on, you can probably start to see it. So cylinder one, at this point will be fully closed. The lobe is on the far end so it cannot be any more closed if it tries. Cylinder 8 on the other hand is as open as it can be. So fully closed, fully opened. And you think well maybe that's just 1 to 8. However let's check the middle ones shall we? So let's look at cylinders Four, uh, look for a valve, sorry, four and five. So number four, all the way open. Number five, all the way closed. Coincidence? No. Let's move it further around. Three and six. Six, all the way closed. Three, all the way open. Again, 180 degrees out. If one is, again, if one is fully closed, the other one is fully open. So you've got the, the maximum height of the valve there to open. And then we'll go to the last one, two and seven. So when seven is all the way closed, again, your lobe facing down, number two is all the way open. And it is that simple. So essentially, to, to do all cylinders, the camshaft doesn't need to be that far out because you can do cylinders eight, well, sorry, you can do valve number eight and number six. If you keep turning, you can do valve number five, correction number four, number seven, 
number one and number three and then you can do number five and number two and guys that is easy as it is it is and it probably takes one crank turn maybe one and a half crank turn so it is easy to do it's very very straightforward um, it's probably the best method to use for a classic mini it's simple and it just works if you've got any questions comments or queries stick them in the uh, the comments below don't forget to to like and subscribe uh, and hopefully when I get a few more parts we'll, uh, we'll get a longer video and show the engine going in thanks for it guys appreciate it